Getting straight into game one, I found myself up against Mercenaries and uh, played by Tony, who also came up uh, to Auckland. A group of these guys came up to Auckland, that is, uh, for Ides of March earlier this year. Uh, Tony, Hooch, uh, Will and Adam. And uh, Tony is one of their little group. And he's got Damiano and uh, Fiona. The Fiona list had Galleon in it and uh, just the Boom Howlers, whereas Damiano had a lot of troops here. Um, I felt more confident with the Vlad 2 list and I thought this might be a hard matchup so I went with Vlad 2 and uh, he's picked Damiano. The scenario involves the large uh, circle in the middle with the two objectives either side and you cannot uh, control or dominate the objective so you can't dominate the, the, um, the center in the middle if uh, the other objective is in your control range. So if you're a Focus 7 caster like Vlad is, then you've got to destroy it first. Plan here is to sweep around the flank and destroy that objective with the Ulans and then just dominate the center with the pikemen and um, the heavy hitting stuff. But yeah, uh, demon has got a few tricks, so I knew that I'd have to uh, play carefully. Next image, you can see his list here. He's got uh, the still heads uh, on foot and on horse, Harlan. Uh, he's got a mule, gallant, and gun mages, and a few support solos out the back. Uh, looks like I've taken the first turn here um, and moved a few Doom Rivers up in front of that wall. He's responding by moving up with his guys. Just going to skip straight to the next photo. And um, you can see uh, Gallant's out there. He's not really uh, in range for any of my charges. The Doom Rivers, of course, don't have Pathfinder, so they won't be able to charge him. Um, so fairly safe there. Let's keep going through the photos, and uh, he's got uh, Death March on the uh, Steelheads. Sort of regretting not taking the other list here because I could actually snipe off the Death March with Iris. And um, Epic Vlad actually, sorry, 3 Vlad has a lot of things to deal with it. Just wasn't sure if my um, 3 Vlad list could deal with this Galleon list, so that's why I didn't take it partially, but who knows. Next image again, uh, my follow-up turn, I've decided to feat early even though I can't really make many charges here and it's a little bit of a waste of the feat but I wanted to sort of start picking up some momentum and really put him on the defensive while I get my uh, cavalry into position. So uh, I've moved around with, uh, you can see the black tokens represent the feat uh, tokens here. I've actually run with the Draken right next to the objective just to make him really annoying to deal with. And the Doom Reavers have moved up and tried to cut down as many steel heads as they can. Picked up a few, uh, got one guy on the cav, and I've got a couple of Doom Reavers back on the, the wall which um, have had the feat, but um, really they're just there to survive. The feat's going to allow them to survive, then I'll just move in with the transference and uh, do some more damage next turn. The Ulans, as you can see, just waiting for an opportunity because I've taken first turn. I can't attack his objective in my second turn, so I'm going to wait to do that. And then after I've destroyed the objective, hopefully clear a few guys out of the zone and pick up some more points. So that is the plan. Next image, um, he's trying to attack the Draken here, I believe, but can't really manage it. Um, Vengeance goes off, but doesn't actually manage to uh, get the better of the Doom Reaver, who's defense 16 at the moment. Uh, due to Surefoot, I actually managed to miss one of my attacks here, so um, had forgotten about that. Next image, they amid, um, in the actual activation phase, they do a CMA on him and knocking him down, but he um, somehow survives here by passing a tough roll, so that's fine. And uh, next image, uses the mule to lob a bomb onto the Juggernaut, which luckily for him gets a crit, uh, crit devastation, knocking him back into the object, into my objective, and uh, knocking down a couple of pikemen. Um, so that was annoying, it means that the Juggernaut can't just uh, charge through there, which is what I was wanting to do, but he got lucky enough to get the crit brutal there, so not, nothing much I could do about that. And I uh, got one Doom Reaver on the left hand side, uh, tanking a whole lot of uh, attacks with his tough, but uh, eventually they managed to get him. So my follow-up turn here, got to do some damage, I've moved in with the cavalry killing an objective. It's better to kill a, a Jack with the, the cavalry, but I just felt that in the long run I should be able to outmuscle them with the, the pikemen once they get in there and everything's just tied up dealing with the Doom Reaver so far. So Vlad moves up uh, into transference range. Uh, transference helps me kill some more of the uh, Steelhead Cav. Um, still really annoying that I can't get rid of that mule, but at this stage the pikemen do their mini feet and move right in there. So um, they'll be difficult for him to deal with next turn hopefully. Speaking of the next turn, uh, the mule lobs yet another crit devastation on the Ulans, knocking them back. Not killing them, but it's just annoying that he's managed to pick up two crit devastations in a row, um, pushing them back and, and more annoyingly knocking me down, so I can't just get a counter charge onto the Gallant or whatever. Um, it does kill a few pikemen, but most of them survive, so that's the main thing. And the Juggernaut, at least, hasn't been hit by the devastation this time, so 
I am not looking terribly bad. Next image, the Ulans uh, gather their, their men and rally around um, and just hang about here so they can't be crit devastation too far back. They'll hit the wall, unfortunately, if that happens, but I have managed to engage the mule at this stage with the pikemen, so um, although I'm losing a lot of troops, I have managed to get some kills here. All the steelhead cav have been wiped out and um, he's really just got the gun, gun mages which are doing a lot of damage. Harlan Versch um, managed to do uh, some severe brutality to my Ulans because they had a, an upkeep hand of fate on them and purgation was really doing a number on them. So next image, um, a lot of carnage in the center here. I've charged him with the um, the juggernaut but I think he was out of range or maybe he killed a, a gun mage or something like that but at least he's in the correct position now. Um, his uh, retaliation here can't do too much damage because I've engaged his gun mages which are no good in combat. Gallant of course can do some damage here but the mule is uh, engaged as well so luckily I'm, I'm getting shot at a lot less. Next image, what happened here is that he put up Warpath and gave the Gallant um, some focus and actually managed to Warpath them up three inches and then charge Vlad, which uh, was kind of scary actually because Vlad wasn't camping very much. But let me just talk you through the math math mathematics of this. He's popped the feet, so Gallant is, what, power... Tw no, he actually used the feet last turn. So Gallant is um, power 17 at this stage, um, luckily. Um, spends one to charge and moves in. Now Vlad's defense 60, 15, 15, so a 7 against 15 needs an 8 to hit on 3 dice, I think it is, or maybe 9 to hit. So he has to boost, really. Um, so that's another one of his focus gone. He's got one left. If he hits, the, the, the attack is automatically boosted from the charge. So it's power 17 on the sword against armor 16 with no focus. So it's dice plus 1 on 3d6. Now on average he's going to do 11 or 12 points. Vlad's got 16 life. Um, or maybe even more than that, maybe 18 life. If he rolls like 5.56 five, or something like that, he'll probably kill me. But the odds are that he's not going to kill me in one hit. I mean, it's very unlikely that his charge attack will kill me. If it doesn't and drops me below 10 boxes, I'm going to be defense um, 18 or something like that, or 17. And on his second attack, he has to boost to hit, but he needs something like 12 or 13 on 3 dice, which is much less likely. And if he does hit me, it's dice plus 1 on 2d6. So the odds of him actually assassinating him here, I believe, are less than 50%. You guys can work out the maths on your own if you like, but I'm pretty confident it was much less than 50. Um, he actually missed the swing on the charge attack, which was extremely unlucky, and um, then rolled like a 10 on 2 dice with the, the follow-up attack and actually did reduce me to um, less than 10 boxes. So that means Vlad's uh, defensive stats are very high now and he gets a blood token focus. So um, this was a nice attempt at assassinating me. I didn't think it was um, you know, going to work though. So following up with that, Vlad camps all of his focus at this point and um, casts Martial Paragon. The point is that I don't want to take the free strike after spinning some focus because it could hurt me quite a lot. But if I um, cast Martial, Martial Paragon and just hang there, um, you know, that means that, um, you know, I've got more focus to camp it with. If I cast Martial Paragon and walk away, there's a chance you can actually break free with Warpath and go after me. Um, so I didn't really want that. So I felt, uh, especially since he was out of um, control range of Damiano, I could just sit there and tank him. But what actually happened through all this carnage is that uh, Damiano walks around and actually attacks uh, some of my guys, throws a conviction and actually gives Gallant a focus. Gallant to boost to hit me anyway and uh, tries to get me but doesn't. And um, in a lucky last ditch attempt to win, Vlad runs away and hides behind a wall um, and he's got Marshall Paragon so he ignores the free strike. So <laughs> not very heroic of Vlad but he is hurting quite badly. And uh, I win the game here because my opponent clocks out. He'd just been taking too much time. But in the attrition game, I think I probably would have managed it because um, the Juggernaut then mashes the Mauler. Sorry, not the Mauler, the Mule. Very close, similar names. And then the Iron Fangs just simply carve up the rest of the um, the, the Gun Mages. And uh, Vlad just stays behind the wall healing. So managed to win the first game. I wouldn't say it's a, a hugely comfortable win. There are a few situations back there where I thought the Tide might turn against me. But um, Kador really uh, showing... Um, a little bit more martial um, class um, over the, the mercenaries um, who don't have as good choices in some cases, but pretty strong Damiano list in my opinion, uh, nothing terribly wrong with it, and uh, Tony played it fairly well, so uh, kudos to him, and we'll go on to the second round very shortly.